Hey guys, Groundskeeper here uh, with a new product demo and uh, just also wanted to show you guys my new truck. So here's my new truck. It's a uh, Chevy S10, older beat up one, but uh, it's okay. It's in pretty good shape for, uh, it's an O2. So uh, anyway, it's got a couple little rust spots on it here. And, uh, but anyway, there's, but what I wanted to talk to you guys about is this, uh, new Ryobi mower that I got here. And, uh, I, uh, I have all the other Ryobi tools and, uh, this is another one that takes the same kind of batteries. This takes the six amp hour batteries. Uh, both of them for the purposes of this video are fully charged. And, uh, I bought this mower uh open box so it's got a couple little issues but uh it's pretty much exactly as it comes from the factory and uh i got a slight deal on it uh paid about 300 bucks for it and uh bought it online and it took about a week for it to show up so anyway uh out of all the ryobi tools i have to say that this one is uh the worst out of all the Ryobi tools that I have. And I'm gonna show you some of the things that I think uh, I like about it and also some of the things I don't like about it, unfortunately. Now, I I got the Ryobi one to replace this old, uh, old beater mower of mine here. And uh, so this is the side by side. And I thought that I, I figured the Ryobi one might actually be lighter than my old uh, Troy belt. Now, now I have beat the heck out of this Troy belt, uh, self-propelled thing, and it takes it. Believe me, it takes it. The reason I wanted to switch to the Ryobi was because it has the rechargeable battery, and I thought, oh, the batteries work with the rest of my tools, and it has these whopping six amp hour batteries, and uh, it's got this neat little thing here where you can put both batteries in and the way that arrow is pointing at this battery it uses this battery and then if you use that up you can just switch this little plug out to use the other battery so you don't have to take them out switch batteries it runs on one battery at a time basically there are some things I like about this uh, the handle that folds down very convenient and just clicks into place and because it's battery operated, it can be stored upright like that. Uh, the blade is fairly easy to change. It's just a nut right there, and it's pretty easy to keep clean. So that's a handy feature. And it clicks back into place like that. It's lucky that it actually fits me pretty well. Uh, I'm quite tall, but uh, personally, I think I would rather have it if the thing was a bit more upright like that but eh, it is what it is right and uh, I guess you can drop it down to maybe another position like that a little bit lower if you're a bit shorter it's got this handle on here that's supposed to make it easier to pick up and I thought it would be lighter than this guy but I think actually it's heavier and uh, that's why one of the things I find that's a bit unfortunate about it so, uh, anyway, what are you going to do? But, uh, just had to refresh there. So, anyway, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You just pull this handle, press this button, and you can hear it's running right away. And then it has a speed control right here, maximum, minimum. You can see I'm cutting some grass with it right now, and it does an okay job of cutting. That's an electric mower for you, as opposed to the gas mower, obviously. Uh, this is pretty nice feature. It has a easy little uh, deflector thing that can pop on there. Uh, 
it's in my truck at the moment. And it's things that I'm not really that keen on. It's got these lights on the front. I mean, 10 of them. Uh, I don't know how often I'm going to be mowing at nighttime. And whenever you're running the thing, the lights are on. So even during the day, I don't know if there's a way you can turn those off during the day, but it kind of, uh, to me, that's a pointless waste of electricity. And you want every bit of electricity you can get with this thing. It's quite heavy and the self-propelled part actually doesn't seem to propel it all that well to me. And I think I would have been better off had I known of getting the non-self-propelled version and just pushing it myself because it's it it pushes fairly easily and uh, the self-propelled mower motors that control the back wheels they uh, use up quite a bit of the power so unfortunately you're wasting a lot of power on pushing itself uh, it does okay for getting up and down hills and that kind of thing now this is one of, another thing that I like about it is this single handle on the side to raise and lower front and rear it's got a bar there and that connects to the front wheels so you got you can easily raise and lower the all four wheels uh, as opposed to the old school on my old Troy built right there you know you gotta you gotta mess with this and it gets stuck and it's a pain and that kind of thing not not as easy that's that's a great feature I think this feature should be on every mower that is made. That should be a, a law, basically, but it's it's not. You can't have laws like that. Anyway, uh, just wanted to show you guys this machine. I think between the two of them, the old guy here is still going to get some use. Uh, the reason I switched out was because of pulling this. Uh, sometimes you got to pull it two or three times to get it started. And then, of course... You've got gas and oil and you've got that in the back of your truck and you might have that spilling and that kind of thing and there's always smells that go along with that and whatnot. It's uh, dirty and oily and this one is all clean and futuristic and looks like a sci-fi movie but uh, between the two of them honestly the old uh, Troy built wins. Uh, it'll go through anything. This guy uh, will die after about half an hour's worth of cutting you know now if the grass is fairly thin you might get 45 minutes out of it but uh it's been pretty rainy and thick grass this year and so you're really only getting about 20 to 25 minutes of cutting out of this thing which is it's okay but uh it's that's uh not what i need you know i need a bit more than that now the batteries, these things are whopping 6 amp hour battery and they're supposed to work with all your other Ryobi tools. And I've noticed that using them with my string trimmer for example, they, uh, they work okay but they almost work too well. They, they provide so much power with the string trimmer that it's going too fast and uh, I'm worried that it might be a little bit overpowered for that. So uh, they work well with the blower. Uh, makes it last a good long time. But uh, I fear that it might be uh, putting too much stress on the smaller motors of those machines. So I'm not sure that you could really can use the 6 amp hour battery with everything. And I've also heard that the 6 amp hour battery may explode too. You know, there have been some cases of these bigger Ryobi batteries catching fire and stuff like that. So, you know, that makes you a little bit nervous too. Uh, so it's got its good sides and its bad sides. Out of the Ryobi, I always go with the Ryobi uh, electric tools. I've been real happy with them. But uh, overall, I would say, unfortunately, this is the worst of all the Ryobi cordless tools that I have. And... Uh, Anyway, uh, you guys take care and uh, hope you have a good summer. It's really hot here. It's been brutally hot. And we'll see you on the next one. Take care.